Shalom, and welcome to Iskar Forum, a prophetic think tank. This is Les Lawrence and from Elisha Vision Ministries. Glad to have you with us. Uh, lots of things going on today. Before I pray today, though, I want to say thank you to everybody who's been saying happy birthday to me on Facebook and Twitter and uh, Google Plus and Instagram and uh, what am I leaving out? <laughs> LinkedIn and <laughs> all the different uh, social media. Uh, appreciate it. Been wonderful outpouring of love, and I'm very grateful. And I'm grateful to the Lord for blessing me with 70 years of of a real fruitful life and wonderful family. My wife Doreen and seven grandchildren, three daughters, seven grandchildren. What a blessing! Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord. So let's pray, Heavenly Father. I thank you that as we look into the news and the events of the day, and especially regarding Israel and the restoration of, of Israel and your purpose and your promise to Israel. Lord, it's also a good time to just pause and thank you for your great blessings. We've just celebrated the 4th of July and the liberty that we have in the United States to uh, freedom to worship you and to serve you. And we just pray, Lord, for our nation. And I'm also especially thankful today, Lord, for my family and for the blessing that you have given to us. And, and I just want to, I want to be one of those who returns to say thank you and give you the honor and the glory and the appreciation for for your hand on our lives. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Well, hallelujah. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on as usual in the news. Um, I want to talk uh, in just a minute uh, about Greece and the vote that they just had today where they gave a pretty resounding no to the idea of uh, being part of the European Union. So that's going to be a very uh, big news story for the next few days. But before I talk about that, I want to mention my blog. Uh, my latest commentary was called ISIS Attacks Egypt Near Israel Border, and uh, that's that's really big news. I'll, I'll explain why as we go along through it. Uh, if you haven't been my blog, uh, give my little plug. <laughs> you can find it at www.elishavision.wordpress.com, and I hope you'll turn to there and, and uh, read. Uh, this past week... Uh, is a major, major issue in the Sinai, uh, which is at this time Egyptian territory, kind of between Egypt and Israel. Uh, it'll be part of Israel in the biblical fulfillment when everything, when the dust settles, so to speak. But anyway, uh, ISIS has been growing in, in that area. And uh, on July 1st, ISIS carried out a major attack against Egyptian troops uh, very close to the border with Israel and Gaza. In Egypt, right in that area, in the Sinai of Egypt, and uh, the uh, I've, they've been giving reports, of course, through the week, and uh, it's pretty clear that there's been at least a couple hundred people killed, uh, mostly uh, ISIS members and Egyptian soldiers, including four Egyptian officers, uh, but also civilians, of course, also died in in the damage, uh, and uh, it's pretty serious. And uh, it's interesting that in the timing of all the threats that we heard about the 4th of July in the United States, and of course nothing really happened, praise God for that, that there weren't any major uh, attacks. Uh, but there's a, my conclusion in my article, just to skip to the end of it, is uh, I, I talked about what draws uh, these people. Um, there's a, a quote at the end of the quote from Debka Files says that uh, there's a fatal attraction uh, to ISIS, its radicalizing ideology uh, holds a fatal attraction for young Muslim uh, Muslims who are taught that the brutal murder of Islam's foes is a cleansing and purifying act. What kind of a religion says that? My, my. And then uh, I commented on that. I said this fatal attraction is nothing more or less than the demonic spirit from hell that loves death more than life. Satan comes only to steal, kill, and destroy, John 10.10. 10. He's the one who spawns the, the abomination of desolation. Uh, but that's not the end of the story. Um, here is the truth. Listen to this from Isaiah 8. Jehovah has given me a strong warning not to think like everyone else does. He said, don't call everything a conspiracy like they do, and don't live in dread of what frightens them. Make Jehovah of heaven's armies 
holy in your life. He is the one you should fear. He is the one who should make you tremble. He will keep you safe. Hallelujah. That's Isaiah 8, 11 through 13 in the New Living Translation, the NLT. And uh, that's the one I'm standing on. I'm finding my refuge in Jehovah God. Hallelujah. Uh, I want to say a few more things about the, the what's going on in Egypt, but let me just go ahead and finish my comment on the Egyptian, uh, excuse me, the Greek uh, crisis where their, their uh, country is in bankruptcy and they're, they had a referendum. It was, it was really a non-binding referendum, but the EU said, we're going to wait and see what the people say. Well, evidently 61% of the people voted no to uh, receiving the loans and, and the money from the European Union uh, and, you know, kind of in a rebellious stance for Israel, for uh, Egypt, excuse me, for, for Greece uh, to, you know, just standing on their own, so, to, so forth. But what they actually were saying no to was the requirement that went along with the handout from the EU, and that was that Greece had to accept an austerity program, a very strict uh, new program of uh, more taxes, uh, lower incomes. They, and they just had to put controls across the board. And Greece, has, the people of Greece, the average retirement age in Greece is 61. Uh, and they have been so used to living on the government handouts, the government dole. Uh, it's a very socialist country that uh, when they were faced with, you're either going to die as a country or or you have to accept austerity, they voted no, no austerity. And, uh, and basically, in doing that, committing national suicide uh, because they, they don't know how to live any other way than to receive the handouts they've been receiving. And uh, so that's the real message of it, I believe. Uh, as you see it in the news the next few days, uh, I think that may help... Uh, may help instruct your interpretation of what you're hearing in the news. Uh, they, they're really, uh, re, they're voting no to austerity, and uh, they're not willing to accept uh, <laughs> what, you know, what's required to, you know, to receive the help from the EU. So it's going to be a pretty a tricky road to follow. What will happen with the, with the European Union, with Greek, the, the Greek, it's called the Greek exit from the European Union, or the Grexit. <laughs> Uh, because it, it could just mean that they will just be completely out of the European Union. So we'll see what happens. But uh, the vote was just today, and it was a resounding no. All right, let's get back to the story in the Sinai. And I want to spend a little time on that right now because uh, I think it's very significant. Uh, like I said, there's uh, at least a couple hundred dead, 64 uh, Egyptian soldiers. And uh, there were 15 separate attacks by ISIS on different checkpoints in one small town uh, in the Sinai up near uh, near the Gaza border and, of Israel and Egypt. And, uh, and the, the, the details are what make it really kind of scary because ISIS is said to have used anti-tank and anti-aircraft missiles in this attack. Uh, at the beginning, when it began, Egypt immediately sent in helicopters to, to fight off the attackers and found that that the uh, that ISIS actually had these anti-aircraft missiles, and they started shooting at helicopters. I'm, I'm not sure whether or not they brought any down, but Egypt then had to back off of helicopters, and they ended up bombing them with jet planes. Uh, but the point is, that's a major escalation in arming of uh, of ISIS in the Sinai. And uh, it was they used uh, not only these anti-aircraft missiles and anti-tank weapons, but it was very sophisticated Russian-made weaponry, and uh, that's something I think we need to really pay pay a lot of attention to. Debkafal reported that uh, 200 people at least died, and uh, it's uh, the reason this is such a major uh, attack and significant uh, is that right near there, very close to uh, where this is where this attack occurred, I mean within a few miles, is what's called the MFO, or the Multinational Force and Observers, going all the way back to the peace treaty between Egypt and Israel, and the Camp David Accords under Jimmy Carter. Ever since then, there's been a multinational force and an outpost right there in the Sinai, 
uh, not that far from where this attack occurred. I mean, a matter of, I think, a dozen miles or so. And uh, it's called the MFO, Multinational Force and Observers. But it includes uh, soldiers from different countries, including the United States. So we have actually United States soldiers right near where ISIS has made this major attack. And then uh, in our own news, because of the 4th of July and the, the, uh, the warnings about possible attacks in the United States, uh, the news has pretty well dropped off the face of the earth as far as what's going on in the Sinai. But there's a report today in the Times of Israel it says Egypt kills 25 gunmen in the North Sinai. Uh, and uh, this was today, five days later after the initial attack. And the article explains that uh, this fighting is continuing. It's going on. Um, and, you know, most of us thought, well, it must have just been that one attack that one day. But there's actually ongoing fighting. And uh, Egypt actually uh, today killed 25 gunmen uh, of, the, um, of the radical Islamists. And uh, so it's something I think we need to pay close attention to. Uh, it's near the towns of uh, Sheikh Zawid and Rafa. Rafa is right literally on the border of Gaza. So uh, I think we'd better really pay attention to that and see what's, uh, what's going to happen with that. And then there's another report uh, just uh, today on Debkafile that ISIS rushes reinforcements to Egypt. And it says its next targets the pyramids and Sphinx. You might have seen in the news that they've been breaking up uh, uh, ancient artifacts in, the, in uh, Syria in Palmyra, but uh, now they're targeting the pyramids and Sphinx. Uh, at least that's what they say. I don't, you know, they haven't got there yet, but that's what they're trying to do. But they are rushing in reinforcements to Egypt from Libya and Iraq uh, for the battle with the Egyptian forces in the northern Sinai, and which went into its fifth day today. And uh, so very interesting. And uh, again, one of the things that I course have been looking for and I believe is all in process is the Psalm 83 war and uh, in the recent months with the rise of ISIS it uh, it appears that it may be ISIS who actually is the the catalyst that uh, that ends up causing the Psalm 83 war very that'd be very logical at least and uh, they seem to be moving in all over the the, the area of the Psalm 83 nations uh, even Jordan is really uh, concerned about ISIS now well um, Breitbart.com uh, has an interesting article. It says it talks about the uh, this is the this week was the first anniversary of ISIS the, or the Islamic State when they declared the uh, as ISIS declared the Islamic State, and it says first anniversary scorecard, 3,027 executed, including 74 children and 86 women. That's one year of ISIS operating there in the, in Iraq and Syria primarily. And uh, obviously, it's a very demonic, uh, satanic cult, a death cult. And, uh, of course, it's based on uh, direct quotations from the Quran. Uh, in fact, they consider themselves better Muslims than the rest of Islam. They consider virtually all other members of Islam to be apostate Muslims because they're not strict enough to follow the actual writings of the Quran. And, of course, I pointed that out in general in my book, Simple Islam. Um, well, let's change gears here and talk a little bit about the uh, Iran uh, negotiations. That's uh, the, the latest postponement of a week uh, expires on Tuesday. And already they're talking about, well, if we're close, we may just postpone it a little longer. And, and uh, so, you know, it remains to be seen what, what's going to actually happen with that. Uh, on the one hand, you hear... Uh, the Ayatollah is saying that they won't yield, won't give in on anything. And then you hear John Kerry saying that the U.S. is real close and we're very, you know, almost there. And uh, so, you know, we won't know until we know, I guess. Uh, uh, but I think it's a, a very serious time and certainly this is the time we need to be really praying. I've said before, of course, that I believe, uh, and the scripture says, that Iran is involved in attacking Israel in the last days prophetically. But it's that's actual. They're they're mentioned in Ezekiel 38, uh, which is a separate war from the Psalm 83 war. I've explained why, and you can see it on my blogs if you go back a few. <laughs> but uh, so I don't think this is actually the time for Iran to to attack Israel. And in fact, I think they may be diminished for a season 
which kind of indicates that, that they may be attacked by uh, by Israel or in some other way be diminished. So we'll kind of wait and see on that. Uh, another very disturbing report uh, from the U.S. this week, um, and this is from the Telegraph, uh, U.S. blocks attempts by Arab allies to fly heavy weapons directly to the Kurds to fight the Islamic State. The only fighting force that's actually been succeeding against uh, ISIS is the Kurds. And the U.S. has promised the Kurds weapons for years, actually going back to when we were leaving Iraq uh, under President Obama years ago. Uh, and, and yet Obama keeps insisting that the arms go through Baghdad. Well, then Baghdad isn't passing them on to the Kurds. So the Kurds are still fighting with lesser equipment. And ISIS it keeps getting, when every time they beat the Iraqi army, they get all of their weapons and their uh, sophisticated, up-to-date American equipment. And uh, it's it's just unthinkable uh, that the president, and now, now the allies, the Arab, Sunni nations, want to supply the Kurds directly, and the U.S. is blocking it. Uh, there's something much more sinister uh, and really uh, evil going on here than, than meets the eye on the surface, it seems to me. Well, um, another disturbing report, and uh, this is also just today in the Times of Israel, uh, but it's in American media as well. Uh, it says Israel is losing Democrats. They can't claim bipartisan U.S. support anymore. Frank Lunt, a top U.S. poster, warns, uh, he, he did a poll that uh, says that asked whether Israel is a racist country. The question was, is Israel a racist country? 47% of Democrats said yes. Only 13% of Republicans said yes, Israel is a racist country. What in the world is going on? Well, we can see the trend line in the Democratic Party is away from Israel. It's very serious. Uh, serious consequences for Israel and for our own government. Because I know the Bible is clear. Those who bless Israel will be blessed. Those who curse Israel will be cursed. And, and our nation and our administration particularly has been uh, not blessing Israel, but fighting Israel in many ways. Um, here's a little internal news in Israel. A, a large uh, Hamas cell has been uncovered in the West Bank. This isn't Gaza, but this is the West Bank that's supposedly under the rule of the Palestinian Authority, uh, they found a large gold-funded Hamas cell. Israel Security Agency breaks a, a strong, a 40 strong, 40 people in this cell in the Nablus region, uh, foiling a terror attack in the making, but they were financing themselves by gold, uh, selling gold, getting gold from other countries, and, and collecting gold, and then that's how the, they're financing it. Uh, very interesting. We need to kind of pay attention to that and understand that Hamas is expanding, trying to get into that area. There was a disturbing decision in the municipal government of Jerusalem this week. Uh, Christian events can only be held in the future uh, in Jerusalem only if the rabbis approve, the city's rabbis. This came out of an event that, that was in uh, the big brand new arena, Payas Arena, uh, where I think it was 11,000 Christians gathered together uh, in uh, just just a couple weeks ago, but the uh, anti-missionary ultra-orthodox protested it, and they were really upset that the city allowed them to meet there and got a new ordinance passed where the rabbis get to have the final say. That could actually shut down Christian gatherings, even of tourists in major venues like that. They, they said this whole big convention of 11,000 Christians from around the world was uh, a missionary plot. <laughs> and uh, so uh, that's that's not good news. Uh, then elsewhere in, in Africa, uh, Boko Haram this week uh, has killed, uh, this headline in uh, Breitbart says 148 people. That was in one village. Uh, there's another uh, 97 in another place. So something like 250 People have been murdered by Boko Haram, who also pledged their allegiance to ISIS. And uh, so that's something pretty serious that's going on. And um, also, um, one of the presidential candidates on the Republican side, uh, Ted Cruz, was quoted in Breitbart saying, It's sad. Uh, the U.S. will have an embassy in Havana 
before having an embassy in Jerusalem. For years, the U.S. has voted, the Congress has voted to have the U.S. Embassy move from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, but it keeps getting uh, stopped by a presidential decree every six months, including under President Bush and, and previous presidents, and now President Obama, every six months, issues an executive order blocking moving our embassy to Jerusalem. And yet, this week, the president announced that we're going to open up a U.S. Embassy in Havana, Cuba, and allow them to open one in the United States. Uh, if that doesn't show you that things are upside down, I don't know. Well, um, I just uh, I thank God for what he's doing. There's a couple little good news here at the end. There's an article about uh, in Breaking Israel News about a leading rabbi says the arrival of the Messiah is imminent. Uh, this is not a Messianic rabbi. This is a, an Orthodox rabbi in Jerusalem who is actually saying, speaking of the Shemitah year and the four blood moons, which the fourth one is this fall during the Feast of Tabernacles. He actually, this 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 rabbi says that the Messiah is going to come this September. <laughs> and all I can say is, even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. That'll be wonderful. I hope Jesus does come uh, right away. Uh, well, I guess that's enough for today. There's a lot of news, uh, but uh, praise God that God is in control. God said he's going to restore Israel and uh, we've read the end of the book. We know that we win and that God's will will be accomplished. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. We just do uh, speak blessing, Lord, on Jerusalem. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem, the real peace that comes from the Prince of Peace, Yeshua ben Yehovah, Jesus, the Son of God. Thank you, Father. We love you and we praise you for your uh, heart, your nature, your character, that you are the God who keeps his word even to a thousand generations. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Shalom, shalom.